Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here, and welcome to my Earth's Arctic deck profile video. This deck finally came out, Ancient Guardians is legal, it's out, it's released, it's on store shelves, and this was a deck that I definitely wanted to pick up from the set. Is it as competitively viable as some other things I could be playing? No, not really, but it's very fun, and it's a deck that I naturally was going to gravitate to because of how much I loved Yu-Gi-Oh! 5Ds, and like the old days of me playing Yu-Gi-Oh! as well as how highly I still hold it in my mind. This deck is a deck that has a unique summoning mechanic in the form of something that is very similar to Dark Synchro Summoning from Yu-Gi-Oh! 5Ds. Now the core fundamentals of the Dark Synchro Summoning used in 5Ds is different from this, but the main thing of Subtractive Synchro Summoning is still there. And it's a unique mechanic into a deck that literally only this deck has this mechanic, and I find that very interesting and very fun. But this deck is something that interests me like greatly because it's not quite too far gone in terms of playability. It is playable, it just takes a lot of cards to play unless you start supplementing other engines in it to make your uh, Ursartic engine more efficient at playing. Uh, so it's definitely not like in the deep end of completely unplayable like garbage piles of cards, but it is still something that could definitely benefit from a really good support card down the line which we're almost guaranteed to get because all of these deck build sets usually get a new card for each of the archetypes in them one or two core sets down the line. I mean, we've got the Drytron one coming out soon, the Live Twin one coming out soon, the uh, the Sulfa Cord one has already been announced in the form of the Link Monster, so it just makes sense that I would be looking forward to that sort of card because that card might be something that fixes the core problem of the Earth's Arctic card pool, which is that it takes too many cards to play and you have to lean on supplementary engines to allow you to play efficiently. But basically, this deck has definitely some problems, but I feel like there's a way that you can build the deck and play the deck in a way that minimizes those problems as much as possible and allows the deck to truly shine where it actually does shine, which is in the longer expanded game because your Earth's Arctics are more efficient at being summoned once the game is actually progressing past turn one. But I'm going to show you this deck list as quickly as I possibly can while also giving you as much information as I feel like is needed. But before I show you this deck list, definitely subscribe if you're new here and you want to see more content. Enable the notification bell so you don't miss an upload. Also, like the video, leave a comment down below. If you like Earth's Arctics, let me know. If you think you know what the problem is with this deck and how it could be solved a bit more you know, competitively, definitely let me know and all that sort of nonsense. But if you're interested, the links are also in the description to my Discord server as well as my Twitch page and my Twitter if you want to follow me on either of those or join my Discord server where you can have more access to me, speaking with me and other people in the Discord server, following me and connecting with me on Twitter and Twitch and all sort of stuff, especially when I do my live streams, then you can use those links for those purposes. But with that out of the way, let's jump straight into this deck profile. So my Earth's Arctic deck as it stands is 43 cards in the main, and it's definitely something that I'm trying to get it down to 40, but also 43 is good for side decking patterns usually for me. I'm very good at deck building around that. And there are more cards that I'd like to play in this deck than what I am already playing, and it's something that I'm like trying to find room for all these cards as well. It's like, there's actually a rather large pool of cards you can play in Earth's Arctics that make it pretty good, but. Going into it, the Earth's Arctic lineup is three copies of Mick Polar. This is the one when summoned, it is going to add an Earth's Arctic from your deck to your hand. And then I play two copies of McTannis for the other level seven. These are the only level seven Earth's Arctics that I run because the other one only summons from your hand. It summons a uh, special summons an Earth's Arctic from your hand when it's special summoned. And that's usually not really that effective. They all summon themselves from your hand anyway through their own summoning conditions. But these are ones that actually gather you resources by adding Earth's Arctics and then recurring Earth's Arctics from your graveyard. So you have consistency and recursion in these cards and you don't really need too many Earth's Arctics and you don't really want your hands to be clumped with a lot of Earth's Arctics without seeing your supplementary engine to actually make them more efficient at being played. It's sort of like an old Dragon Ruler deck back in like late 2013 and uh, early 2014 when the babies were banned and the big Dragon Rulers were being played in various decks. The big Dragon Rulers were actually some of the worst cards in your deck if you drew multiples of them because they did not play very efficiently on their own. You'd be burning Dragon Ruler effects and not really doing much in terms of plays. But if you had your supplementary cards that actually supported the Dragon Rulers, then you were actually playing a lot more good Yu-Gi-Oh. So it's just one of those things that just works out uh, where you actually want to be opening a certain amount of Earth's Arctics, but not really that many. But 
five level sevens and five level eights rounding out the 10 Earth Arctics that I'm playing in the main deck. And the level eights that I'm playing is two copies of Mega Polar, two copies of Mega Tannis, and one copy of Mega Billis. Mega Billis is the DD Crow when it's summoned next to an Earth Arctic monster. Mega Tannis is the Book of Moon when it's special summoned next to an Earth Arctic monster. And Mega Polar is the, uh, the MST when summoned next to an Earth Arctic monster. Uh, basically, this 10 monster lineup with the Earth Arctic names is pretty decent as far as I'm aware. Like, I've been playing a lot with this deck and you want to see some Earth Arctics but not too many. You definitely don't want to see none because then it makes the uh, like the plays with the rest of your uh, deck a little bit awkward and you have to use a bit more of them in awkward ways. Uh, whereas if you actually access Earth Arctic cards through those supplementary engines and have them alongside it, then you're capable of doing a lot more with both of the sides of the deck. Basically, it's trying to work hand in hand with the Earth Arctics and your supplementary engine to actually allow the cards to work in efficient ways. Uh, but these are very good for disruption, obviously. The Book of Moon one is usually always used on the opponent's turn to stop them from playing. The DD Crow one is like a little bit more niche, so it doesn't come up nearly as much. And the MST one is obviously very, very good, but five and five for the level eight tuners and the level seven non-tuners. Uh, it's basically just a really good spread, and then you also have consistency cards that allow you to get to them a bit better as well. But for the supplementary engine I'm playing, I'm playing three copies of Deep Sea Diva and then three copies of Neptibus the Atlantean Prince. Uh, we're playing these because the water cards that are in this deck synergize very well with the Earth's Arctics because they are waters. So you have access to discarding them for cards like uh, Minstrel and stuff like that. But also these are like one card starter cards that get you to at minimum a Polari. Uh, even if you're locked into the restriction that the Earth Arctics have of if you summon them, you can only summon monsters with levels for the rest of the turn, you are still capable of going Deep Sea Diva into Neptibus, floating some uh, advantage around with Dragoons and stuff, and then making a Polari because Diva is a level 2 and Neptibus is a level 1, so you can just subtract them and summon Polari because that's a level 1 synchro that you'll be able to make. So like these are pretty good like either like either one you open is going to step up into a Halka Firebrax play which gets you into Polari by itself anyway so it doesn't matter which one you open Diva is obviously the better one uh, but you can still utilize Diva when you're locked under the Earth's Arctics to make Polari so it's still a very good engine to play over some of the other supplementary engines I see people playing like Despots and uh, like Synchrons with Righty and Lefty Driver and stuff but carrying on Three copies of Dragoons, obviously this card just floats advantage around, you're just always going to be triggering this off Neptibus and stuff and Minstrel, so this is going to get you searches. Uh, funnily enough, uh, you search Moulin Glacia, and some of the hands you just don't even summon Moulin Glacia, you just pop it out of your hand to summon an Earth's Arctic, because sometimes you don't have the capability to summon the Moulin Glacia, but you're able to just use it for free advantage to summon one of your bears, and that makes it like pretty good as well, because it just bridges into the engine pretty well. But carrying on, Deep Sea cards, three Deep Sea Minstrel and one Deep Sea Artisan. Minstrel operates as like a starter card in this deck because you can get rid of your bears, put them in the graveyard, and then have like the Monster Reborn spell or have something like Deep Sea Aria that combos with it to get you to Deep Sea Diva and have additional starters. And also the fact that you're comboing with this card in every combo anyway, whether you open it or not, and getting perfect knowledge of your opponent's hand is huge because you're gonna be able to see what you need to be dealing with from your opponent and decide whether you need to Moulin Glacia them, whether you don't need to Moulin Glacia them, and instead you can go through the Lapis Dragon combo, all that sort of stuff. Uh, Artisan is played because you summon it off of Deep Sea Prima Donna in mid combo, and it revives another card. So Artisan is either gonna be reviving Deep Sea Diva mid combo to make Polari with Artisan and Diva, or you're reviving Minstrel to do some other combo and using Artisan and Prima Donna to make like a level eight sinker like Cypher Lord Omega or Borload Savage Dragon, depending on how much space you have on the board. Uh, but Minstrel and Artisan are really good for the combo as well because between these two cards, Artisan gets summoned and mills a card out off the top of your deck to the grave when you summon it in order to special summon one of your things from a grave. And if you're specialing Minstrel, Minstrel's effect will be negated, but you can still pay the cost for its effect of milling three cards from the top of your deck to the grave and then targeting a water in your grave to try to put it back on top of the bottom of your deck. The effect will be negated, but you still paid the cost and you milled three. If you're milling four cards, you could mill Earth's Arctics. And Earth's Arctics in your graveyard work very well when you are making Polari because Polari can revive them from your graveyard. Uh, and also you have access to banishing them from graveyard off of Big Dipper, making your Earth's Arctics in hand more efficient. Uh, so it's really good, like really good for how the combo can sequence up and step up into being played. But for the other Atlantean like targets, Lapis Dragon and Moulin Glacia, the Elemental Lord, uh, depending on what you see in their hand off of Minstrel depends on which one of these you go for. Lapis Dragon is obviously for pure combo, and obviously you need to search Lapis Dragon if you're starting with Neptibus and not D.Va, uh, but Moulin Glacia, uh, depending on what you see in their hand, you either drop Moulin Glacia early and take two cards out of their hands, 
uh, to try and hit the problematic cards that you saw off of the Minstrel that uh, you have a 50-50 shot of hitting, or you just search it and you keep it in your hand to pop for a uh, for a bear summon because it's just a random level 8. Uh, so it works pretty well in that regard. Now for like combo Garnets, one Despot 1 and one uh, Mecha Fan Beast Colt Wing. Uh, Colt Wing is actually fine to draw or do whatever with because the Auroradon combo, you can do a version of the combo that's more basic but doesn't involve Colt Wing. But Colt Wing is just so good in terms of what it allows you to actually do and expand upon in the Auroradon play that it's worth playing. And then Despot 1, if you draw, you can just summon out of your hand off of Hulk Firex, so that's fine. Uh, these are bricky, but they're not like like textbook bricks of like if you draw Colt Wing, you can't combo. You can combo. You can even cut the Colt Wing if you're just okay with doing the bare basic combo. Uh, but the basic combo involves you opening Earth's Arctics or milling Earth's Arctics off of your Artisan and uh, Minstrel. So uh, like you have to have access to other cards in order for Colt Wing to not be necessary in that combo, but you can still do it. But carrying on, hand traps time. Three copies of Fantastical Dragon Phantasme. This is a hand fixer. Uh, it has some targeting protection behind it, and also it is a level 7, so it's poppable to summon your Earth's Arctic, so it has double duty in this deck, so it's actually pretty, pretty good uh, in terms of what it allows you to do. I wanted to play Nibiru in this deck as well, but that's more of a side deck card anyway. Uh, like, I would rather just play better cards in the main deck, especially since the main deck is as tight as it is because of how many cards you have to dedicate to the Earth's Arctic and Atlantean engines in order to make them functional, but I digress. Carrying on, the last hand trap that I play is three copies of Ash Blossom and Joy Spring. Uh, this this hand trap is just goaded. It's the best hand trap in the format because it hits so many cards. Uh, it's the most versatile hand trap in the format by far, so you kind of have to play it. I would like to be playing like Nibiru or something, or even something like Miradora potentially was something that I tested because these are hand traps that are all high level, so you can pop them for Earth's Arctic summons, but at a certain point you have to concede to how good Ash is. Uh, and like just use it even though it's not something you can actually use for combo pieces if it's not live or if it's turn one or whatever. But that was all the monsters. That was 33 monsters going into the spells. Three copies of Earth's Arctic, De uh, Earth's Arctic Departure. This is a Melody of Awakening Dragon for this deck and also when it's in Graveyard, uh, except the turn it was sent there, you can banish it from Grave instead of tributing a monster for an Earth's Arctic Summon. So the more of these you have in play, the more of these you have access to, the more consistent your deck is because you're going to be searching two Earth's Arctics with it if you draw it, and then also the, the more you have in Graveyard, every single turn you have one of these that's a free Earth's Arctic Summon, which makes your deck play a lot more efficiently. Definitely run three of this. I see some people running one, some people running two, because they're like, it's a hard once per turn. I would rather see two of this than none of this by a large margin, because it just makes the deck play so much better. Two copies of Earth's Arctic Slider. This is a quick play Monster Reborn that also summons from the Banish Zone. You banish some of your Earth's Arctics off of cards like Deep Sea Aria and Big Dipper interactions in this deck. So this gets those back so you don't lose those resources. And then also it just triggers your Earth's Arctics on the opponent's turn uh, in a bit more of efficient ways because you're able to just play this and summon one of your banished dudes. And if it's one of the like Mega Polars or Mega Tannis or whatever, those effects trigger. Uh, if it's the level sevens, those effects also trigger to get resources to your hand rather than disrupting the opponent. Uh, it's pretty nice. Really like that card, but it clumps at three because it's a hard once per turn. Uh, and it doesn't like discard a card like Departure does, so that's why it's not worth it to play more than two, in my opinion. One copy of Earth's Arctic Big Dipper. I don't think you need to play more than one of this. This card's activated from your deck by summoning Polari. Uh, and then this card is fantastic, because this card is another card that allows you to summon more Earth's Arctics in more efficient ways, because you're able to go banish an Earth's Arctic from your graveyard once per turn instead of tributing for an Earth's Arctic effect. And then its other effect is each time a monster is special summoned, you put a counter on this card. And then when a monster is special summoned, uh, you can remove as many counters from this card as possible if you choose to. Minimum seven, so you remove at least seven counters, but you remove all the counters off of this card. And then you target a card on the, uh, your opponent controls and take, contr uh, take control of it. You take control of a monster they control. Uh, so, and it's whenever a monster is special summoned, whether it's yours or the opponent's. So you can trigger it on your turn as well to take again. Uh, so when you're comboing up through Polari, uh, through like the Hawk Firebrax line and stuff, you almost always end with this having six or seven counters on it, meaning your opponent is one special summon away from making it live, and the special summon is what lets you take it anyway so it's perfectly fine like uh this card becomes live turn one very easily and it's a permanent take you take it and you keep it forever so it's uh it's really good but another spell uh i ordered these a little bit too late for them to arrive for this video so uh big unfortunate for me uh but three copies of deep sea aria these are in the mail like i said they, they'll probably show up tomorrow knowing my luck anyway three copies of this this card is fantastic because it's just more copies of starters like D.Va, and it's also accessing, like, uh, accesses Mistral and stuff. If you open, like, D.Va plus Aria, you're able to search Lapis Dragon and Mooling Glacia, because you don't have to search the Minstrel, because you can just search Minstrel with this. 
so you can search Lapis Dragon Summon it and then also have access to Moulin Glacia because all of your Dragoon searches will be for stuff that is not Minstrel. Uh, but also, like, even if you're starting your turn with Earth's Arctic plays, uh, this makes, uh, Earth's Arctic makes this live. Like, Earth's Arctic Departure makes this live. The Earth's Arctic Monsters themselves make it live. Even though the Earth's Arctic Monsters put you under the level restriction for the rest of the turn, Deep Sea Aria for D.Va is still a one-card Polari that floats around Atlantean Dragoon's Advantage to good effect. So it allows you to at least play the deck a bit better. Uh, so this card is fantastic. I think this card is undoubtedly a three of in this deck. No uh, exceptions. But last spell is one copy of Call by the Grave, just so that you can you know have a card that negates hand traps. Uh, like you already have Minstrel to look in their hand and like uh, get perfect information. But sometimes you still need the Call by the Grave. Sometimes you'll look at their hand and you'll see like Ash Valor or Ash Didi Crow, something like that. And uh, like the Call by the Grave comes in like really nice there because you're actually able to uh, play around both hand traps. So it's pretty nice. But moving on to the extra deck. Three copies of Earth's Arctic Polari. This is the main combo card you're going to be playing through your bears because when you summon this card, it activates Big Dipper from your deck, which is huge. Uh, it's the uh, the Baylinx effect, the Striker Dragon effect of just having access to your field spell. It's really interesting that that's on a Synchro Monster now. But also its effect on field is once per turn, you can tribute a level 7 or higher monster you control to summon an Earth's Arctic or add an Earth's Arctic from your graveyard to your hand. So it summons an Earth's Arctic from your graveyard or adds it to your hand, and that's huge. Uh, because you're able to bypass that with Big Dipper banishing or Departure banishing itself. Uh, and you're able to just keep using this to revive Earth's Arctics uh, and get a lot of advantage out of that. So definitely instant three of. Uh, you're summoning this card every single turn. But for the win condition, two copy of Septentrion. Uh, this card is a big, beefy, unicorn-type monster. That's a 3,000 attack monster that, when it's on the field, negates the effects of every single monster that does not have a level. So all Lynx and all Xyz monsters have no effects. They are negated. And that's huge, considering that's the entirety of, like, the format right now, is Xyz's and Lynx. No one's playing really, like, that heavy of, like, synchro strategies. Dragon Link makes some synchros, but they're not core parts of the deck. You have to resolve Lynx to get to those, and all that sort of stuff. Like, the own Invoked Engine is the only engine that's going to actually be putting out something that has a level like easily enough for you to like be a threat to Septentrion. But when your opponent special summons a monster once per turn, you can also add any Earth's Arctic card from your deck to your hand. So like that's huge as well. Like they have to out this card <laughs> through doing stuff and then them doing that is going to allow you to search cards to try and stop them further like Megatanis to be Book of Moon or you can just like search follow-up cards that are really powerful like Slider or Departure. And then one copy of Grand Chariot. This card is a Geyseris. When it's special summon, you can target two cards on the uh, board and destroy them. Uh, and then it has like a targeting protection thing, but that never comes up. Uh, like usually never comes up. You just summon this, pop two cards, and then like a swing for game. But that's all the Earth's Arctic Synchros. For the rest of the Synchros that are being played, Herald of the Arclight, Deep Sea Prima Donna. This is a core combo piece. Geomathmic Magma. This is a combo piece for one of the combos uh, involving Halka Fibrax. So it's usually just a throwaway Synchro to make your uh, Dark Synchro Summon into uh, Septentrion happen because it's a level 8 Synchro tuner that's just generic but also it funnily enough has a weirdly relevant effect of if it kills something in battle you can pop two cards on the board and like that's actually like surprisingly real as far as an effect that is just on a throwaway monster that you're almost always throwing away for a combo if you do make this and just end on like uh use it for like swinging it's actually very good uh for like uh resource management and uh gameplay tactics but one copy of Cyphering Lord Omega and one copy of Warlord Savage Dragon. These are interchangeable in terms of what combos you make them in. Sometimes you need to make Omega to banish a card out of their hand and clear the board for more comboing through things like Colt Wing. But then also sometimes you just make Warlord Savage Dragon instead because you do not need the room management. And then the last synchro that I play is one copy of White Aura Bahamut. Uh, this card summons a token when you summon it. Uh, and that token can be used with Polari to be tributed and just summon Earth's Arctics from Grave. And then the longer this survives, every opponent's turn where you do not have a token, you get to special summon a token off of this guy, which means that's more Earth's Arctic summons for free off of things like Polari and whatever. So it's actually just like really, really good for uh, the long game. You play this deck in a way that makes your stuff more efficient the longer the game goes on, and White Aura Bahamut contributes to that very well. But for Lynx, one copy of Christian Hauka Fibrax and one Mecha Fan Beast Aurorodon. There's no reason to try and muscle in any more Lynx into this deck because the Earth's Arctics lock you out of Lynx and Aurorodon locks you out of Lynx. So you're getting doubly locked out of Lynx depending on what you're doing. The Hauka Fibrax is obviously really good into Aurorodon through Despot 1 and it's like a guaranteed like combo into Polari by itself. So it's just really good to play. Uh, so there's no reason to play any more Lynx than these. And then the last card in the extra deck is just a random card that I've been finding fun to play a lot and comes up a lot, and that is Mecha Phantom Beast Draco Sack. And there are a lot of times when you're going to be starting your turn with multiple level 7s on the board, 
whether that's Septentrion or one of your Arsarctics or a few of those Arsarctics and you're not locked to the level restriction of summoning only monsters with levels off of the Arsarctics, you're able to just overlay into this, pop two tokens out, get your Despot 1 back, and that does wonders for you in terms of a play because you can do things like summon this, summon your tokens and summon Despot 1. That puts four counters on Big Dipper on your own turn by itself on a follow-up turn so you can push for a steal with Big Dipper again. And then also it just gets a lot of resources back into play for you to make more synchro plays happen. And then also this card is spot removal uh, by uh, like taking out stuff. And then this card also works very well in conjunction with White Aura Bahamut if you have both of them on the board because White Aura Bahamut will just continuously be spawning tokens which work well with Polari but also work well with this. So that is the entire deck main and extra. The side deck is a bit wonky but I'll have to cover that in a future video because I'm not really sure on what I can put in the side deck for this deck that would fix the major problems that I've been having. And that is my entire Earth's Arctic deck. Basically, I have some like theories on what cards I want to be siding for the deck, but it is a bit hard because the Earth's Arctics naturally conflict with really good cards like Lightning Storm and Evenly Matched if you summon them on your opponent's first turn. And then also cards like Phantasme also play into that problem, so you can't really side those kinds of cards. I'm still working on the siding patterns for this deck and trying to make it work as well as possible. Definitely expect a follow-up video at some point if I'm able to figure that out in a way that I'm happy with sharing. But other than that, as always, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for being here. Thank you for making it to the end. If you did get this far, give me a hashtag dubairs in the comments down below if you made it this far to let me know that you got all the way to the end of the video. But like I said, links are in the description to Discord, Twitter, Twitch. If you want to follow me, join any of those. They're definitely there for you to use. Subscribe if you liked this video and you want to see more content from me in the future. And if you want to see more content that's already out there, definitely go check out the channel. There may be some videos out there that you would like to see. But other than that, as I've already said, thanks for watching. Thanks for your time as usual, guys. And take care. I will see you in the next video.